international friends, and welcome to the CU Insight Network podcast. My name is Lauren Culp. I'm the president and CEO at CUinsight.com. And it's my job on this show to have conversations with the thought leaders who support the credit union community. There are so many of them out there. And together, we get to identify the issues that affect credit unions and talk about the best practices that exist so we can all learn from one another and improve our industry together. I am thrilled for our conversation today. My guest on today's show is Lori Wolfield, the COO and consultant at Lending Solutions Consulting, Inc. Lori, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm excited to share what our company does and exactly what you just said, how we can continue to keep the movement going strong. It is so cool. I love the work you all do. I always start off these episodes the same way, which is to say most of us did not grow up thinking we'd get to work with credit unions. I'm curious what you wanted to be growing up, but I know you have a really unique story. So you might have grown up wanting to work with credit unions, <laughs> yeah. but what did you want to be growing up? You know, it's funny you ask that because when I teach credit and employees, I always ask the same question because nobody really grows up even knowing what a credit union is until we're old enough to understand, you know, the world of finance. So I get a lot of interesting answers from people, right? But mine is kind of unique because as you know, as all of you know, you know, my father was Rex Johnson and he was kind of a pioneer in this industry. So I did grow up understanding credit unions from a very young age. But I actually wanted to be a truck driver when I was young because I saw how much my dad was traveling and I thought being a truck driver might be a good way to accomplish that. And, you know, we used to take a lot of road trips back then. Nobody really flew. And I loved hearing my dad on the CB radio. That's, you know, how old I am. I wish I could remember his CB handle name today, but I I cannot. But I thought that was about the coolest thing ever was how they were able to talk to one another. So I got part of my wish. I get to travel all the time, but I am no, definitely not a truck driver. <laughs> that is a unique answer. I don't think we've had a truck driver <laughs> before. I love it. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit then about the journey to your current role as COO and consultant at Lending Solutions Consulting. Absolutely. So as I just prefaced, you know, my my story is a bit unique because I did grow up understanding credit unions as much as a, you know, child or teenager cares to. You know, I always joke, nobody really knew what their dad did, right? Or did we really care what our parents did, either mom or dad? But anyhow, my dad did found Baxter Credit Union, which has grown today to be a quite a large credit union. And he was kind of a a pioneer in the industry of bringing everything that he'd learned outside of what a credit union really stood for and more what finance companies stood for of helping people that no one else would help. And he brought that to a credit union and that model took off and just grew. And I was so impressed with the stories he would come home and tell me about how he would help people that nobody else would help because he believed in them and he knew that they would get back on their feet. And I just thought that was was just so special. And it's really what made my dad such a special person, even when he wasn't working. So he started a consulting company to help more credit unions kind of take on the model that he had done at Baxter. And as I grew up, I went and started working for his consulting company from a very young age. I've been doing this now for over 25 years. And my company today is just really, really motivated and, you know, inspired to keep his legacy going of truly helping the underserved. And so we are carrying his legacy on today and making sure that, you know, nobody in the credit and industry ever forgets what we truly stand for. It's so special to hear about the mission that is woven into the work that you do. And I think it it is the heart and soul of our industry too. I'd love to hear a little bit more about Lending Solutions Consulting, Inc. What you do specifically that really adds so much value for credit unions. Absolutely. So to really understand our company, we always go back and remind ourselves of the kind of the catchphrases that my dad would say to us over and over in all the years that we worked for him. And so I'm going to tell you a few of those today because they're just truly so inspiring 
And they're woven into everything that we stand for and we continue to um, build our company around. So one of one of his famous ones was obviously helping the underserved. And he always believed that everyone's best days were ahead of them. He never thought anyone was too far gone for help. He always uh, loved the movie Patch Adams. And some of you that get an opportunity to hear this may remember my dad teaching the movie Patch Adams. He would teach it in a red nose when he taught his famous University of Lending and also went on site and taught Patch Adams. But one of the famous lines of Patch Adams' movie was, see what no one else sees. It was a, a movie that Robin Williams starred in. But so he always believed that he wanted to see what every other financial institution wasn't seeing that he could build around that member and 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 kind of foster that relationship. Another thing he would always say is, who else is going to show you how to pay us less? And my dad always wanted all of his members to be empowered to understand how credit worked and how credit scores worked. And he said, you, you know, the mission behind that was quite interesting because when he helped somebody improve their credit score, in, in all reality, they were going to pay him less in interest, but he didn't care. You know, he wanted everyone to have their best life. And that's something that we really believe in. So what we do is take a lot of those core principles that he um, felt so passionately about, and we turn it into an educational program. Because to really understand all those principles and be able to help your members on that level, it does require education. So when members come to you and they say, how much can I afford? Is this a good idea? How would I get out of debt? How can I improve my score so I can become a, a homeowner? I want to be a homeowner and give a, uh, you know, an opportunity for my children to have their own home. And all of those things are something that we hold really uh, near and dear to us. So when we come in, we teach a combination of classroom. So your employees understand how credit works, how the FICO model works, how the Vantage model works. So we can share that with the membership. We go over the core principles of underwriting, how to understand how to go over a credit report with a member, and probably one of the most important things is how to interview a member and truly have a conversation. We believe that's a lost art and that a lot of people have forgotten what a conversation means and what that's going to do to allow you to help more members. In addition, once we do the classroom, I think what makes us particularly unique is we go, we actually go in your branches. I become a teller, our consultants become tellers. We become an underwriter. We become a call center representative. And we actually meet with the members live so they can see us doing everything that we just taught in the classroom. And I think that makes us particularly unique that they actually see it live in action. That is so cool. I think for folks being able to watch you walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Exactly. No critical. No, we, I have found if you only do classroom and then you leave, sometimes the employees are like, that was really neat, but I don't know that I could do that. Or I don't know that I have the confidence or if I have the skill, but if we actually combine the two together, by the time, time we're done working with the employees, they are ready to go. I love that. Absolutely love that. You mentioned, as, as you said, you all are experts in lending. You work with a lot of credit unions. I know you mentioned interviewing. And I'm curious, what do you see as the biggest determining factors for lenders and underwriters to make those informed lending decisions? You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I do think the interviewing is a big part because I I think sometimes we treat a direct loan opportunity or application just like an indirect or an internet, and we're not taking advantage of the opportunity to get to know that member. And my dad always said, find one thing that you like about them and then build the loan around that. And so that does require a very strong interview. But something else that we believe is we always want to catch members on their way back up. And in, and find a solution for them when they're struggling. But there's so much opportunities to catch them on the way back up. Some of the ways we do that is again, going over that credit report and really understanding the, the score factor codes after the score 
and making sure that everyone knows what those codes are telling us. So the underwriting fat follows those codes. So does the interview. So we go over the codes, what order the codes should be in. I like to say which code gets to climb to the top of the mountain, meaning which codes do you want to see after that score and which codes are very dangerous if they follow that score. You know, so we go over all kind of really understanding the trends, I believe, using trended data, which is kind of a newer concept, is one of the best things to ever hit our industry. So we're not judging a member off just one month, but we're actually able to look at the members' patterns and understand those patterns, and then we can make more informed decisions. I love hearing about all of these different factors. And, and to your point, some of this, maybe folks know as underwriters lenders and some of it, maybe they really need to be reminded of. And, and I love the work that you all do there. there. There's a lot of really new things that have come into play in the recent years using trended data, using non-reportable data. And our experience has been that we're, um, we just need to make sure that we're keeping the employees informed on that and how to use that because they're such incredible tools that will continue to allow us to help more people. That is amazing. So Rex has a wonderful legacy of helping the underdog and empowering members to really enhance their credit scores and their overall financial wellness. What suggestions and insights do you have for credit unions to help their members in this way? Score enhancement is something we feel so passionate about. And so many people are not able to buy their first home. And it's truly not because of an income issue. It's because of a score issue. And educating members on how to have better scores doesn't mean you have to make a lot of money. You need to understand how your actions can improve your score. And so some of the things that we really pride ourselves on is we recommend you have a sheet that you give your members when you sit with them during a loan application or on opening a new account where they can walk away with an actual kind of to-do list or top three things that they can get their score up so they can achieve some of those goals. And there's so many things that people don't know about. It could be something based, you know, based on which model you're on, but paying a little bit extra on a credit card, making sure that you don't skip necessarily payments or skip an opportunity to make a full payment, knowing which collections to help to try to find resolution on and which collections your score actually gets lowered if you try to take action on. And of course, the dreaded utilization questions that everyone is starting to learn a little bit more about, but they still don't truly know what percentage of my credit card should I use and should I pay the whole credit card off or should I leave a small balance? And those small things can drive someone's score up 50 to 100 points in as little as 60 days. And so it's just so inspiring to have somebody sit with you and say, in as little as 60 days, we can help you become a homeowner, for example. That is so cool to hear. I love all the actionable tips that you give for credit unions to give to their members. And I think the ways that we can be enhancing their financial lives, that's the mission of credit unions. That's what makes us different. And I I love to hear it. Absolutely. I know effectively serving our members can also look like maybe picking up on a problem before the member realizes that they have it. You are the expert. You work with so many credit unions. What can you share on how the the top credit unions are picking up on those problems before the members? Well, I think there's no question that they are doing that. I mean, obviously, they stay on top of trends. And using things like the trended data, non-reportable data, and they continue to invest in their employees. So even the newer employees are given the same opportunities to learn from some of these newer concepts. But it really boils down to understanding some of the key things you could be looking at. One of the things we teach is inflated income and really taking a look at how much the member is putting on on a monthly basis and new debt. And it's critical in in keeping your bankruptcy and your losses under control, but on a truly deeper level, just making sure that we're finding some solutions to help members before they get too far down a path where it's too late. As we look to the future, where is Lending Solutions Consulting Mm -hmm. focused for the road ahead? What's on your roadmap? Absolutely. 
I think that we have to stay very on top of what our competition is doing and what the industry and consumers as a whole are craving. In addition to that, we have to make sure that we understand how lending and assisting in a world of inflation is, understanding that the issues of liquidity and how financial institutions are struggling there and how important it is to get members deposit business. We want to continue to go in and not just like you said, not just talk the talk, but actually walk the walk and make sure that the employees are seeing firsthand how easy it is and truly how fun lending is and how inspiring it can be to get to a level where you're truly helping somebody. It really hurts to deny people. And when I sit with credit union employees, I think sometimes we lose sight that the ones that actually have to deliver that bad news, how hard it is. And so we want to try to avoid that, to, you know, as much as we can. I am so appreciative of this conversation. I'm inspired talking to you <laughs> and hearing more about the legacy that Rex has left and the amazing work that you're doing with it today. As we wrap up the show, I always like to have some fun with rapid fire questions to let our listeners get to know you a little bit better. The questions are rapid, but your answers don't have to be. So if you are ready, I will go to the first question. A lot of pressure here, but I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> question one, who is someone in your life that was a great leader and what makes them so great? Right. Well, You probably know the answer. I'm going to have to say my dad because he was so special. And one of the things that we always say that made him so unique and special was that he could sit with the chairman of the board and he could sit with the tellers and he treated everybody with respect. And I think that's what made him so unique. And he knew the art of the interview and he could get any member to tell him their entire life story within the first 60 seconds of sitting down with somebody. And that's something that we have to continue doing so we can find solutions that others are not able to see. So he, he was special. He would always say, stop being so serious. He wanted everyone to have fun. And that's part of why he liked the movie Patchy Adams so much, because he truly believed everyone should laugh every day and make your members laugh as well. I had a feeling that might be your answer to that question. (laughs) Right. I I love it. (laughs) All right. Second question. If you're going to splurge on something you want to treat yourself, what is something you might invest a little bit in, whether that's time or resources? Well, you know, I have to tell you that I would love to take my family somewhere You know, when you're in a house all day, it's like I have teenagers and all they want to do is nap all day and play too much Xbox. And when we get out of the house and all those, you know, distractions are gone, you get that true family time. So I'd love to take them somewhere tropical where you can, you know, I don't know, look at the ocean and see to the bottom. And for some reason, it just seems to make all your problems melt away when you see something so beautiful like that. And it's getting harder and harder to do that because of the age of my children. So I I wish I could go back to those days when it was a little bit easier to ever get everybody away and not worry about everyone's schedules and all of that. Right. <laughs> well, travel is a great answer to that question. Our next question for you, if you travel for work, you mentioned you do, I know many of us do. What's that city that you're really excited to visit when you see it coming up for a conference or a client visit? Well, you know, I, I'm going to have to pick warm weather because I live in Chicago and it's, it's, it's not warm here many months out of the year. You know, I really love going out to California. Probably one of my favorite cities is Sacramento. I just love that out, you know, that outdoor lifestyle. I love seeing everyone together outside and they always feel, I always feel like they're enjoying life and enjoying just the simple things of a conversation and, you know, being someone that has to be inside so many months out of the year, I I really crave that in the winter, you know, so I, I'm, I'm envious that people can do that year round. Yes, that is a <laughs> good answer. <laughs> All right, next question. What is a book that you think everyone should read? You know, I am not much of a reader. It's on my list of to do's of improving, right, myself a little. But I will tell you, if I do read, I enjoy a book that's basically the Hallmark Channel in print. I like uh, to smile and I like to feel good. And so I would read a book that I 
would know the ending, but it just makes me so happy to see a happy ending. I kind of like that Colleen Hoover. She's a little, you know, kind of popular right now. And I don't know, I think reading should be enjoyable. So I like movie. I like, you know, books like that, I would say. I like that answer. (laughs) All right. Next question. What has been your best hack for creating balance and integration between your work life and what I might call your life life? Absolutely. You know, I really have to work on that because I I am on the road the vast, vast majority of the time. So when you come home, it's like, what do you do? You know, do you do do you clean? Do you spend time with family? And one of the things I found is you have to let things go that get messed up the next day. And then what did you miss that you could have been spending time with your family on something that nobody really cared about? Right. So I've had to work on that. And I still work on that because that's a hard thing for me. My other advice I would say is I write everything down and I make lists because I need to have the visual when I get something done that I have accomplished something. So instead of worrying about all the things I still need to do, I can feel good about the things that I got done and be more present for my my family. I like that. As someone who is a big list maker too, I sometimes will add the item that is already done to the list so that I can cross it off. Exactly. <laughs> it on the list. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. For sure. Well, we are going to link to everything we talked about today in the show notes. But Lori, my last question for you is, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share or any final asks of our listeners? You know, I just think we all need to keep remembering what credit and stand for, and it's people helping people and never lose sight of the underserved and really believing that everyone's best days are ahead of them and giving your employees the tools to continue to truly enhance the the life quality of, of your members. I know financial distress is something that's just so hard on people, and we feel passionate about trying to give everyone an opportunity to have their best life. But also just remembering a little bit of my dad's advice and finding time to laugh every day. And laughter truly is, to quote Patchy Adams, the best medicine. And I think that's it. That is a perfect way to wrap up this episode. We're going to link to contact information for Lori and her team at Lending Solutions Consulting. If anyone is interested, you will find that right in the post. And there's so much good work that you all are doing. Lori, thank you so much for sharing all of it and being on the show today. It was so great to connect with you. Thank you. Take care. You as well. And thank you to all of our listeners today for tuning into the CU Insight Network podcast. And we will be back again next time. 